Castlevania Lords of Shadow can be described as an action-adventure game with excellent gameplay, beautiful scenery and great cinematics. A lot of people wanted a game that's more close to the franchise and a lot of people just describe it simply as a God of War rip. I'm going to take a different approach and show you what the game really is. So let's get to it. Me, warrior. Are you aware of what is happening in the world? You play as Gabriel Belmont, a member of the Brotherhood of Light. He is sent to Pan, one of the main characters in the story, because of a dream that your wife might have the answer for the world's suffering. And so the journey begins. One of the things that I immediately noticed was how the game gives you the exact feeling of a journey. Through the map you can see how far Gabriel has to travel. The music and the cinematics, which are after some key points, also add to this. Not only this, but almost every piece of cinematics is connected to the traveling and the hero's experience, so as to drive forward the story. And this has been excellently done. Although the game itself is linear in terms of navigation, you will get derailed lots of times before encountering each of the Lords of Shadow. It appears that our paths cross once more. But one path must end here. Almost all of the characters fit well into the story, each of whom get an introduction either in scenes or texts or even monologues. At each of the movie scenes there's just enough talking to keep you interested and make you want to play more and ultimately that's what every game intends to do. Also, the scrolls found throughout the world will give just enough info about upcoming puzzles or characters to keep up the game's pace and they never seem to be either vague or too much. So it's a great addition to read them because you will anticipate events even more. Zobek, your partner in this mission, reads out the monologues before each section of the game. This way he sets the mood, provides some background or even furthers the story. I always thought that a good game must have a good story and Castlevania excels in this, especially in the ending which opens up the way for DLCs and sequels. The story is not unique but it is carried out in such a way that you get immersed in it and just want to play it. In addition, it's almost like the game sees how after each of the sections you get a bit tired and so gives you these scenes and turns in the story to keep you going, which is great, I think. My acolytes were not lying. A warrior from the Brotherhood, here on Lycan soil. The game consists of combat, platforming and puzzles. Each of these is greatly carried out. The combat in the game is not a button smasher. You get almost a hundred different moves with addition in black and white magic, different kind of relics, secondary weapons and you can also mount different kinds of monsters. It really is hard to get bored with it since the game never gives you too much of a specific enemy. The combos you can learn look amazing and can be remembered which is important. You can buy all these skills for points earned in the game. Around 60 to 70 percent into the game only the most expensive ones remain, so you get to actually use the full skills Gabriel has to offer. In almost all of the levels there are also mini bosses with again cinematics, gates you have to pass in order to progress and so on. Each of the hundred enemies or so get an introductory scene, some you'll meet more often than others. The wide range of enemies again are cleverly thought out and an experience to battle with. In addition, you use the full set of secondary weapons, relics and magic because there will be times when it gets rough. In addition to this, you get the clever puzzles, you can always reveal the solution but you won't get the reward for them and it's more fun if you try to solve them because they seldom repeat each other and you feel the accomplishment with the music and reward that goes with it. These puzzles never seem to break the gameplay, maybe because they are either at the end or the beginning of each of the section. The third part of the game consists of platforming. It's either because of the scenery or because of the sheer height and various difficulties that it never gets boring. The developers try to give you the feeling that you're not climbing where they want you to climb, but more like in a natural way. You get to reach scaffoldings and mountains, climb to the highest peaks and towers. It's almost like the developers said to themselves, why don't we spice it up here and there and make a difference. And we arrive at the graphics, which is amazing. Not only do the visuals look good, but there are a variety of them, from the vampire castle at winter to the slash green environments, eclipsed sun surroundings, ruined cities and so on. It's a great experience to fight, climb, solve puzzles 
or do anything in such circumstances. You cannot explore all the way around because this is not an RPG, but that's not a problem if you're not looking deliberately where you cannot jump. So if you just play the game, you get the sense like you could go anywhere. The game also cleverly zooms in and out into these scenes so you get the full experience. The camera also works terrific with the environment. If it's snowy, you won't see that much, the screen will show signs of freezing cold. If it's windy, the camera will not keep still. Again, just an immersing experience. Also, in a lot of instances during even gameplay, you get chorus songs, which again is excellent. By the way, the game's audio leaves no questions behind. I especially wanted to say a few words about how the game gives you the feeling that Gabriel is a true hero. In a lot of scenes you're going to see this, fighting, getting knocked down and standing back up and really just not giving up. I never felt that any sentence Gabriel said was useless, which in a kind of way tells of a character who has inner problems and would travel to the end of the world to solve them. In a lot of occasions you need to climb to places which seem impossible to climb and this is what heroes do. They climb to the highest peaks, they fight against all odds with the deadliest enemies and still survive and get back up and continue their journey. But no game is perfect. Castlevania has some bugs, sometimes you don't know where to jump, but even on these occasions the game sets you back 5 seconds ago and you can give it another try. The ending of every game should be as high quality as Castlevania Lords of Shadows was. It has two scenes, both of which give an ending to the story, but also sets the opening for the DLCs, which are actually coming this year, 2011. So all in all, Castlevania is a great game, I really enjoyed playing with it, and I can only recommend it to all of you.